Welcome to Documentation Office Hours. It's the 9th of August. Oh, oh, and Kristen, you're here. Excellent. Very good. All right. So I had uh, top of the list was a question from Diraj on a pull request. And then weekly change log 306. And with that is the Docker images get additional tags, dash JDK suffix. Uh, then change log automation, LTS change log, upcoming events. Uh, I don't have anything actually on that. So let's just call it Hacktoberfest. And that's, those are the topics I have. Anything else that needs to go on the agenda before we start working through the topics? Okay, Diraj, first your question. What was the PR and what's the question? Sure, so I pasted the link to PR in our chat. Oh, good, uh, all right. Okay. So it's very basic doubt that I was embarrassed to even bring up then I said, okay, let's do it. So in this, we are writing, I, I added a demo YAML configuration for this plugin uh, called view job filters. And uh, it's for, uh, you know, anyone who's trying to understand how to write YAML. So I've written that. And uh, also when we are trying to write, as we know, we need to also write uh, tests for the YAML configuration. So since I have not uh, worked or written any tests before, so I'm not sure how to do that. So here I've written some uh, with the help of referring some other tests that were written previously in the re repository. So as far as, as I could understand, I wrote some things and now it's failing and I'm um, trying to understand how to write ideally. Okay, all right. So, so well, so let's, okay. So your question was, and just to be sure I'm understanding it, is your question about the Java code here that is is executing the test or is it about the yaml that you wrote there it's about the java i assume yes it's about the java. okay all right good oh, okay very good all right so what we've got is you've added in the view job filters folder there is a readme that shows an example and then you have written a, an integration test that tries to configure a view job filter and ah ah right okay and so what what tim is saying is that your your test is your test is certainly necessary because we want to be sure the constructor works and what you're what you're testing here is you're testing that do the constructor and then oh oh right but then okay so so what's happening here i think anyway maybe kristen i should be quiet and let you explain it because have you worked on this particular code already kristen no, so I'm kind of learning oh, here as well. So okay, so then then I'm going to I'm going to just make my best guess, and Kristen can correct me. I sure. suspect what this is this annotation configured with README says the uh, the Jenkins that is started as part of this Jenkins configured with README rule. So what J gives us is access to a what looks like a Jenkins instance. And that looks like a Jenkins instance has been configured by reading the contents of this, this job filter of this readme file. So it acts like this was the YAML. I would guess you actually want, I'm a little surprised it, it works like that because I would have, well, I, I don't know what the rules are and how it does, how it reads the readme, but I assume it must look inside the readme and find a YAML block and use the contents of that YAML block. 
So, but then what Tim's saying is, okay, what this did is this configured a Jenkins instance that has views that contain a list and the columns in the list include status, weather, job name, et cetera. So all that configuration happened, but in your test, what this thing does, this new build duration filter is it calls a constructor and creates a new one of these. It is not looking at the Jenkins that is configured, the, this J thing here, and it's not exploring it to see that the values were set as expected here. So right, what we need getting out of this too. Like, yeah, okay. Yeah. So so what we need and but I think we can find exactly something like like he is referencing here by by looking at other usages of Jenkins configured with readme rule. So Diraj, if we look here and I'm going to be lazy and switch to um, my text editor because I don't search as well with GitHub as I do with the text editor. Oops. And we need that file. So, whoops, not that one. Sorry, we need this one. And let's duplicate that so that I can go grab it. I want to clone this plugin. So Diraj, did, did what I've said to this point make any sense at all? Or do you already have questions that you'd like to ask? No, it totally makes sense. Okay, all right. Then let's grab this thing because that is probably the best source of, okay, good. So any one of these things, we'll probably have a Yeah, here we go. <laughs> okay. So what Tim said was we need something like this. Final Jenkins, Jenkins equals Jenkins.get where the no, no, that's not it. Oh yes, there it is. Rule chain. It's doing okay. I'm not familiar with chained rules. So I'm going to have to go looking for a different example. I, I'm confident I could learn it, but okay, here's one. This one is a public, this J, right? And it says, and now somewhere in here, I'll bet there is a J dot, no. Okay, we keep looking, Diraj. Yeah, it's a little confusing in different, different files. There are different ways to write the text. Right. Yeah. A lot of times, sometimes the easiest thing to do is try to find an example of another test where this, where something has already been done, and then just kind of um, mm -hmm. see what they're doing. Um, Here we go. Yeah. Okay. So, so this one has a j dot get instance. So what that does, j dot get instance returns me a Jenkins object, and from the Jenkins object, now I can go to the Jenkins Java doc. So if I go to Jenkins Javadoc, so the Javadoc for core, and I look at Jenkins core, and now if we look for the, and this is a very popular word, so Jenkins, the Jenkins object, I'm just going to have to search for it the hard way. Here we go, this thing. Now on this, so here is the Java doc for the Jenkins object. And this was Tim's suggestion. You could mm -hmm. either return a, get a collection of, that is the list of all views, or if you've got a specific view name, you could call get view by, by name and then assert that the view that was returned has the configuration values you expect. 
So does does that does that help? Does that give you the guidance you were looking for? Of course, uh, better than before. But I'm, I'm, I had still problem to reach from Jenkins instance to my job filter specific tags in YAML. Ah, okay. But, well, so let's. Well, let's let's do some. If you're okay with it, are you okay if we just do some exploring together? Oh, I will love it. <laughs> okay, so so first, let's list the PRs. Okay, so PR checkout and one six zero three. So we're going to check out your pull request. Okay. So now I, I need to see what's different between your pull request and, and master. Okay, good. Here it is. So we need this file. And while it's running tests, let's open that file. Okay, so and so what what we've created here, what you've created in your README. Oh, where is the README? It is in a different location, isn't it? There we it's go. Demos folder. There it is. Yeah. So this this is the the file, right? Uh, yes. Okay. So what if we just for fun took Tim's suggestion and said um, collection of Okay, going back to Javadoc now. Collection of view, views equals j.get instance dot get views. And I'll bet now I have to import. And this is where it would be much better if I had an IDE, how sad. Okay, a view is a hudson.model.view. All right, so now back to our compile step. And it's still downloading. Wow. Okay, so it's going to take its its own time.
how sad it did not approve of my writing it that way. Interesting, it skipped all the tests. Oh yeah, what it's I think what it's telling me is that um, my attempt to run just one test oh, used the wow. wrong syntax. Oh, okay, okay. This is a, this is a multi-module <laughs> project, and oh. I was unwise and said, "Oh, just do what I want." That's all good. Sometimes it's the, you know, it's like trying to remember something. You're like, "Oh, well, I'll make it go faster," and it's like, "Oh no!" <laughs> right. Exactly. It has to process everything. <laughs> yep. And it may be that this won't work either. But so, so Diraj, what the idea was is take Tim's suggestion and now he said, grab the view and what you are looking, yeah, because the thing that you've got is you've got the views and you're looking for a list of views and then in that, I assume we will want to look for job filters. So let's look on Hudson model view to see if there is a way to get filters on it. Okay. Okay, there's a filter. No, I don't see anything obvious here. Okay, filter, okay. All right, so is there some data here that is tracking? So would it be on the describable of the view that it might have the filters attached? No. So we've got a view. A view group. Hmm. I'm not seeing it. Okay, let's go back to the to the whoops frames. And let's take a look for filter. Because what I would expect to find is something that allows us to filter based on criteria like um, is a job running or not? Did it pass? Did it, is it unstable? Did it fail? Hudson filter maybe? No op filter? Status filter, okay. Ah, there we go. Okay, so this I suspect is the thing we need to find is the view job filter. And now how do view job filters get attached? Well, I don't know, maybe job filter that will filter based jobs based on its status. Yeah. So does this tell me Yeah, so what we want is we need to find 
this may be the place where it's best to get a debugger and actually watch it run because then we could explore the data structures. Let's see what we've got here. Okay, so it says, I use three class from uh, Hudson dot views dot package. So build duration filter, build status, and security filter. So those three classes are the same ones which are used in Miami. Okay. And if we if we look for those in the Java doc, I would expect uh, no, no. Okay, so that's not in core. So Hudson.views.buildDuration filter, it says in the code. Interesting. So you're saying it is in Hudson.views. Yes. Interesting. Okay. Well, so let's go look. I don't know if, so we should absolutely, oh, oh, right, right. All classes. No. Huh. I have a suspicion is being pro no, there it is, Hudson.views. And I think what this is telling us is that must be provided by a plugin. which it is Java doc. So the view job filters plugin provides this. Okay, good. Which I guess you, you would have already told me, wouldn't you? Because mm -hmm. guess what? That's this, what it says, this plugin exactly as you documented it. Sorry, mm -hmm. I, I, if I would read, things would go better. And then, but now the challenge is how do we get that from the top level Jenkins, right? Isn't that what you're, what you're trying to do is your challenge is you need to, you want to assert that the values you assign like this amount of 60 and the amount type string of days are correctly are set to those exact values. But in order to do that, you need to find the build duration filter mm -hmm. inside the Jenkins where it was allocated. Exactly, yes. Yeah, and so now the challenge is how do we get it? And I think I may have to go do some exploring with the debugger separately, Diraj. I apologize that I, I don't have an answer immediately because I think what we do is we, we would start from the views here and looking at each view, let's see, this has to, yeah, we would look at the views and then on each view, I would expect to be able to find uh, filters associated with that view. Right. So, sure. so I think you should take your time then because we don't want to uh, take up much time here. Well, well my apologies, this, this, is a, uh, this is a great one. I, th I think I think we can go through and mm -hmm. and do some searching there and and what I may do then is in our next session next week mm -hmm. use bring the summary of the searching if you don't mind waiting that long or I, I could I could send a send a textual summary as well oh hey here's how you do it but the how did I find it is I think the more interesting thing because the how do you find answers to these kind of questions is mm -hmm. is the is the the better challenge, right? It's mm -hmm, right. the answer to the specific question is is helpful, but not nearly as interesting as how do you answer these kind of questions in general? Exactly, right. So I'm totally fine with the next meeting as well. No rush. Okay, answer. great. Well, so let's let's hold, put that there then, and so two small question on this. I'll just ask very quickly. First one uh -huh. is: Is this something trivial because I felt 
really bad for not being able to write tests for this. Oh no, I think I think what you did was great, uh, mm -hmm. and and I I'm in, I'm delighted you thought to write tests, and I'm really pleased that that they have a framework already in place that will allow you to write tests. Mm -hmm. For me, that's that's quite impressive, right? It's this little thing right here is a dramatic step. That's a very nice step forward that they made. Hey, here's this tool that makes it relatively straightforward for you to write tests. Actually, I've got to, I've got to look at this. We've got to, is there anywhere else? Yeah, this is, this looks brand new. <laughs> I was like, I've never seen this before. It looks really cool. Just yeah. To be able to use the readme as a documentation. Well, and, and now the, is there anything in there that would be, that's already associated with view and it looks like that's yours is the only one. Yours is the very first. Oh no, no. View job is is that the one? That... Hang on. Yeah, that's the one you just added. Okay, so how about What if we tried filter? Nope, how about, what's another top level thing on Jenkins that we might have to iterate over the views? If I look at, how about executors? Nope. Okay, so my my dream of finding the easy easy way out did not work. Okay. And second question was that this process of writing test uh, for you know, JCAS repository using Jenkins configured with the readme rule and everything is this so what if we write a blog on this to help anyone so does the with, is this required or it's it's only going to help like two or three people? Is it worth the effort? That's what I'm trying to know. Ah, uh, and I think it I think it is worth the effort. And it might be it might be a an a cool way to introduce the concept of so for instance, I believe we've got uh, on the on the site, I think there is an introduction to Jenkins rule that you would be doing everyone a favor if you taught, if you were willing to blog more about it. So here's, here's one mention of Jenkins rule, Jenkins rule for Jenkins unit tests. Here's the Jenkins test harness description. Notice this big blurb at the top. This is a work in progress and Here is about the total of it, configuration round trip testing, environment variables. So absolutely, this would be a great place to put, or a blog post would be just as, just as good, or a pull request into the configuration as code documentation. Sure. So this, this is exactly what my aim is because I had some tr trouble writing test here. So I don't want anyone else to go through that. That's why I was thinking about this. Right. Well, and, and I think that's, that's, that's a, a great thing. So, oh, and here, and now, okay. Now this is, now here is the terrible embarrassment. <laughs> I spent 10 or more hours when I should have read this section of the documentation. I just recently burned a bunch of hours trying to figure out a solution to this class of problem. Sorry, unrelated to your problem, but a reminder, oh. look at the documentation first. <laughs> oh no, but it looks, it's good that we have this. It's kind of the biggest important thing. I'm so glad we have it. 
Oh, yes, yes, I've, absolutely. Yeah. I've done that and, before where um, I'm looking for something in the pipeline documentation and it doesn't exactly jump out. It's it may be there, but it might be harder to find. So I don't know if that's something that a lot of our users run into as well, like where it's not maybe not obvious and you spend yes. time um, searching, right. yeah. searching and, and realizing, oh, whoops, here's yeah, here are these things. I've I've now used the shade plugin and I'm a little more familiar with it than I was before. But uh, shame on me for having having learned it the hard way instead of reading documentation. All right. So, Diraj, excellent question. Let's put that as a an action for next week. Uh, Mark next week summarize how to explore the uh, Jenkins instance from inside a debugger running a test. And I confess, oh, actually, maybe this would, okay. Uh, maybe what we ought to do is a dueling, dueling debuggers exercise because Kristen, I'll bet you're an IntelliJ user, aren't you? I use Visual Studio Code. Oh, even better. Okay, okay. <laughs> even better. Okay, even better. So, so what we could do is, is we do it as two steps as, okay, Mark show, here's how I do it with NetBeans because it's the debugger I'm familiar with. And then we ask Kristen, okay, Kristen, can you do the same thing with Visual Studio Code or do you do something different? Because Diraj, I bet you use VS Code, don't you? Yes, yes. Okay, so me showing it with NetBeans may be interesting in a strange and bizarre sort of way, but not actually interesting in getting things done. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, so Kristen, would you be willing, Kristen? We do a, a paired paired session. Oh, I'll sure. show show my exploration in NetBeans. You then do the same thing and say, "Oh, here's how you do that with VS Code," because me trying to show it in Visual Studio Code will look completely non-believable because I don't know how to use Visual Studio Code. Sure, yeah, we can try that. Okay, good. All right. Cool. Okay, so we'll have some fun next week. That sounds good. Yes. All right, excellent. So, Diraj, anything else on that question that we can answer? No, nothing is a problem. Okay, next topic was the 2.306 weekly change log. I don't know if you've, I, you said you had just awakened. So I assume, Diraj, you haven't, haven't done it yet. Are you still planning to do it or should I plan on creating it? Oh, no, I always wake up early enough to start working on this. So I've already worked on it and I have a question. That's why I didn't submit it. So I've oh. uh, pasted a pull request link on our chat. So I'm trying to understand um, what should be the tag for it, whether it should be internal or not. <laughs> oh yes, that's a great choice. Look at that. Internal, not applicable. Huh. So which is it? Is it internal or is it not applicable? Okay. So uh, I don't know what. Okay, I'm open to other people's judgment. I'm prone to think there is nothing a user of Jenkins is going to get from a change log entry for this. So my proposal is to do the following. I propose to change this so it says that. What yeah. do the rest of you think? Because this doesn't seem like something that they're with standard. I mean, this is internal stuff. Yeah, this is internal be, below the, in, you know, below developer level kind of right. stuff to my mind, right? This is so right. internal. Yeah, so I'm, I think, I think I'm going to declare it skip change log. 
Okay, so it should go into the comments, right? Right. Okay, got it. Right, so that answers my question. Okay, good. Awesome. Thanks. All right. And I have not looked at the change log in a while, so an answer, so adjusted comment. I adjusted a label on a pull request to mark it as skip change log. Now Daniel and others may, may find they disagree with this. If so, they'll tell us. Uh, also, whenever we are writing a, um, an entry in the comments, do we need to still uh, apply that rule that it should be in the present tense, something like that? Oh, oh, that you know, I, I hardly, I don't remember the last time I reworded a comment. Mm. So I, I, I reworded a comment that's that's in the YAML file as a comment, just because if it's in the YAML file as a comment usually somebody would would want that comment to be able to take them to to the thing leaving it as whatever text they did is fine because it won't ever be displayed to to a reader mm, exactly got it okay yes all right now we've got we've got one change coming tomorrow that really doesn't go in the change log but i'm going to use it for a blog post um Actually, I wonder, Diraj, do you want to be a co-author on the blog post with me? Uh, what will be the topic? So, so what's happened is we've got we've got the JDK eleven, uh, the transition from Java eight to Java eleven. Whoops, Java eleven as the the default JDK, Java on our Docker images. And what that's going to do is that means beginning with 2.307 next week, not this week, but next week, um, the Docker images will run under Java 11 rather than Java 8 by default. Uh, as in order to retain compatibility, retain the ability to revert To Java 8 by creating, we will retain the ability to revert to Java 8 by creating JDK 8 tags for the Docker images. As an example, today, Jenkins slash Jenkins colon latest runs a Java 8 version of weekly. Uh, soon, Jenkins slash Jenkins, actually, tomorrow, Jenkins slash Jenkins colon latest dash JDK8 runs Java 8. And then next week, Jenkins slash Jenkins colon latest runs Java 11. So the idea is that we will give them an escape hatch if they say, well, I cannot have you switch me to Java 11, I must run Java 8, then they will have to switch. Instead of running Jenkins, Jenkins, colon latest, they'll run it with dash JDK 8. Oof. So if you're interested in being involved in that transition, Diraj, I would be happy to have you be one of the reviewers of the pull request and we can talk about it and maybe test it together even to see, hey, does it work the way we're, does it work the way we expect, et cetera? Sure, I would love to do that, but I'm not, um, I don't have much knowledge on this, but I would love to help. Okay, great. I would need guidance from you for sure. 
yeah, well, and 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 just having someone to to discuss it with and review it with would be a, a big help for me. That's great. Then I'll definitely join. Okay, great. So nothing that we need to say in the change log <clears throat> for this one, but we'll do a blog post. And the idea is before next Tuesday's release, um, describing this addition of the JDK suffix. Okay. And how will we be communicating via our IRC or Gitter? I, good question. Yeah. So Mark and Diraj, if Gitter works for you, that would be great. By Gitter in the uh, would you, actually would do you prefer Gitter or do you want uh, the Jenkins community channel? Gitter is easy for me. Community.jenkins.io is just fine too. Um, so let's go with Gitter then. Okay, great. Awesome. Yeah, so we'll use and what I'll do is I'll plan to use the docs, the docs uh, Gitter channel. Okay, good, thank you. All right, so I think we've covered 2.306 weekly change log. Anything else there before we go to the next? Okay, next topic then was change log automation. And we had talked last week um, that last week or two weeks ago that one of Daniel Beck's concerns was, hey, if we have this automation and no one reviews it, it makes things much worse than the change logs we have now. And Diraj, you and I and Kristen and Meg as well, I think all agreed, let's go ahead with the automation and we'll regularly review those pull requests, pull requests so that we don't go make it worse. Sure. Is this something we could even do during at the end of the meeting? It could be just like a standard. Yes, yeah. absolutely. I think I think we could during during office hours. It would be much more effective if we did it that way. That way, we none of us forget. <laughs> it's easier. Right. Yes. Well, and and it it helps us all develop develop a practical vocabulary, common vocabulary, remind each other of the rules. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so uh, I've still got to review, review the pull request and approve, but I think we agree that's a good, a good thing to do and we'll, we'll enjoy it together. Yes. Next. Next topic then was 2.302.1 LTS change log. The release candidate build is scheduled for Wednesday. And it looks like there has been no, no backports requested so far. So it, I've been testing 2.302 weekly for the last week and had no issues with it. So this looks like it will be a relative. Now, the change log creation is hard work and I apologize. I think we had set our goal that we would work it this week and I'm not prepped for it. We could start it if you'd like. In the, we've got about 10 minutes left that we could we could spend on this or we could spend the time talking Hacktoberfest, which which would be more valuable for you, Diraj and Kristen, your 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 take. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure which one to pick. I think change log would be better. What do you think, Kristen? Sure. I think it's because it's more pressing, but I 
is there anything that we just as a quick is there anything fast quick we need to discuss for hacktober fest or there is and it's more about long-term planning so there okay. really isn't i think you're right good observation it's it's much the change log is much more pressing and then maybe we can make sure we talk about hacktober fest like first thing next time right like, at, like before then we can do then we can do our demos but just that way of like if we need to do anything because it is good to plan ahead it's never good to rush but <laughs> right but good good point very good okay so let's let's look at we'll we'll give ourselves up to 10 minutes to look at the 2.3.302 change log so first step for me is always to go remind myself of the generation steps so jenkins github and if i remember correctly we need the core jenkins core change log generator there it is okay and this thing okay tells us how to generate an lts change log for the backported issues but there aren't any backported issues as far as i know because if we look in jira Let's see, and I have to put this off screen because sometimes JIRA shows security sensitive things. So forgive my not showing it to you while I, I look to find it. Okay, next is we want to see issues that are LTS candidates. Okay, so here are three things that are LTS can. Oh, oh, okay. So they're there probably will be some backports then. Interesting. Okay, so, so I think I've been just now proven wrong. If we look at core, is there a backports pull request? I don't see a backports pull request. Hmm. Okay, so I don't see it yet, but there are three issues here that are identified as backport candidates. Okay, so this one's going to take some a little bit of research actually to be sure that has the backporting pull request been issued. Okay, sorry. So now I've got to go. I've got to go look it up and see Jenkins release checklist, LTS release checklist. Here it is, LTS two dot three hundred two dot one backport. Oh. Okay, so the backports are not yet complete. Okay, so what, what you're seeing on your screen is a, this is the LTS 2.302.1 checklist maintained by the release lead. And the release lead this time is Basil Crow. So Basil has, Basil has checked off the items that are done, uh, but we've I haven't seen a backporting announcement email, and I definitely have not seen the backports. So, so there's there's more work to be done before Wednesday's release candidate is available. All right, so that tells us that, and and given that, if I look here, this this pattern two dot what what not let's look in jira where was my jira okay so jira 2.302.1-fix okay there are no bugs labeled
All right, I'm completely perplexed. Okay, now I've got to I've got to go find this. Now I'm I'm forgive my my not being able to navigate. Whoops, let's get download. So if we look at the change log for 2.289.1, changes since 2.289. So these are the backports. For instance, 65605. And it's just listed as 2.289-1 fixed. So there it is. There's proof that there are bugs that are labeled 2.289.1 fixed. And what they're saying is we should check for this. And there are none labeled 302.1. And there are so, okay. So the answer for right now is we don't have anything that would be matched to this tool. So running that tool won't help us. So now the process then is to look at the historical change logs and decide which of them should be brought in to the 2.302.1 since, so let's look here. We look at the weekly change logs and the idea is we're looking for things that have changed between 2.289 here, and 2.302. And the technique I've used in the past is, I'll just do this. I copy the weekly change log into the LTS change log and then start filtering things out by deleting them. So it's usually this. This and this. Okay, so on the left is the LTS change log. And we're going to do 2.302.1. So we'll steal the original code, the original things here. And it will be 2.302.1. LTS predecessor is 2.289.3. LTS baseline 2.2. Now, wait a second. Yeah, okay, LTS baseline is, LTS baseline is 2.302, right? So compared to LTS baseline, yes, okay, so, 
this is. So the changes section here would be anything that's backported. Okay, and then after changes, there will be another section, which is LTS changes. And it, goes here compared to 2.289.3. And this is the part, notice that phrase, selected by personal review. So currently no changes because the backporting PR is not complete. And if we look at LTS changes, what we want to do is, whoops, we want to compare and so I start with 2.28290. And I just copy. Now, if, we, if it was a comment before, I'm reasonably confident that we won't care about it here. So I leave the comments out. And it, you could either do it like this, just copying and then deleting or you could selectively copy. It's what it is, is now it's time to think about it and say, okay, should the jetty change be included? And my answer is yes, absolutely. So this one would be included. Should an issue archiving files greater than four gigabytes be included? Uh, comments. Leave it for now, we'll see. Okay, should. This one be included, yes, this is. Telling people they must use modern plugins. I would take that one out. And so the process you're seeing me do is, is the, the thing that I would go through, I will continue doing is going through it, taking each of these out and pasting them over here and then have to format them correctly so that they fit. Any questions so far? Um which one do you pick out from the weekly to the uh, this one left one so i pick things between the lts predecessor right. 2.89 289.3 or 2.289 and the lts baseline hmm. so is that what you were asking diraj yes yes yeah, so it's start with 2.289, the predecessor, um, because changes will be visible to users for the first time if they arrived on 2.289 and were not backported to 2.89.3. So there's there's a complication that you have to we have to look to see for each of these was this one backported to 2.289, and if it was, then we remove it. Okay. And there's a good example. We just hit one right there. This first one that I selected was backported into 2.289.2. So there is no point in mentioning it again because it's not new to the users. And 54.35 was also backported. So it's not new to the users. This one is new to the users. So the, that, that exercise is a very useful exercise.
All right, we're now past that one hour time. Thanks for your patience. Anything else before we close down for today? Just a small question. Um, what we were doing is from the predecessor till the current one, we are fetching all the entries from the weekly automation file and pasting to the left one that you were showing. And uh, then we were trying to find out that are these entries were mentioned in the previous uh, LTS logs or not. And if they were, we are deleting them, right? Correct. Okay. Yep. Got it. That, that, that was my question. That's it. Yeah. Excellent. You, you understood perfectly. Very good. All right. Thanks everybody. I'll post the recording uh, probably tomorrow or the next day. I'm a little bit behind on getting all my recordings posted. Awesome. Thank you, Mark. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. You too.